All right, folks, welcome to Real Deals and Real Returns with the Borland Group podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Burgess, and I have Dylan Borland right in front of me. How are you doing, Dylan? I am doing awesome today, Jeremy. All right, folks, uh, go ahead and follow him. Go to the Borland Group, LLC.com. Hit him up on Facebook.com forward slash the Borland Group. Yes, you can also find me, Dylan, D Y L A N S, Borland, on Facebook. Facebook. I think that's how you do face it. Boot. Face boot. <laughs> that's right. Get the boot Facebook. So I'm not a tech guy, but I think that's how it is. You just search in the bar, Dylan S. Borland, it'll come up. Yeah, and also Dylan hosts yeah. a monthly meetup on the first Saturday of the month. If you go to meetup.com and look up the Borland group, it's from 10 to 12. Definitely check it out. Just did one um, recently. You had a tax guy come up, help yeah. people out with that. And then you went through a ton of questions with people, helped them out. Yeah. With hard money, rehab questions, all sorts of questions. Yep. So good stuff. Good it's limited to the first 50 people. We do uh, stream it live on Facebook. So make sure you RSVP yeah. and show up on time. Otherwise, um, you won't be welcome. He wants to keep it intimate, folks. It's like intimate yeah. coaching. It's a coaching session. So we're focused on it's a group coaching session. So that's why we limit it to 50 people or less. But we really want to dive down into what we can do to get your business to the next level um, in a group environment. So check it out, meetup.com. I think he said that. Yep. And then um, if you can't get in on the RSVP, um, like Jeremy mentioned, it will be live streamed yep. on, uh, on the Facebook And pages. never miss it. It'll be all there. And folks, if you like these... Um, Dylan's taking time out of his day. He could be doing, he could be prospecting right now. He can be getting contracts signed to be going on an appointment. So here's what we need you to do. We need you to like it. We need you to subscribe. We need you to rate and review on iTunes and we need you to share it from those Facebook pages yes. so we can see it. All right. Um, if you want to, if you want these to keep coming, we need to get some numbers up and we need to see that you're sharing it because we are doing these for free. Yep. So, um, and thank you for, I know a bunch of you are doing that too, and this is a new one. So, Please continue, and we really do appreciate it. So, yeah. All right, Dylan, what's, what deal you got this week? So this week, we're going to talk about a fix and flip. My focus is most, if you guys know me, most of the time is on fix and flip deals. And I have a fix and flip that we purchased, renovated, and resold in Trenton, Michigan. And that came from a um, probate. Okay. Probate deal. Was that direct mail? Direct or? mail. Okay. Um. So yellow letter or postcard? This or? was not a yellow letter. And I know we talked about David and his yellow yeah. letters, but uh, this was a more um, intimate letter. Um, it was a, just a, a letter in a light blue. When I do my probates, let me start there. Yeah. This will probably help people. When I do my probate mailings, um, remember when we're talking about probate, it's a very sensitive topic for some people. A lot of times they have just lost this loved one or this individual. And so... The, the other thing to keep in mind with probates is it takes time. If you're mailing to a probate, they may, I've had people call me a year after the fact and say, I got your letter a year ago. I held on to it. I'm ready to do a deal. And, and yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It, well, because in my letter in there, it says, Hey, you know, my name's Dylan, my wife and I, I don't say my business. I take the business aspect out of it and make it very personal. My wife and I buy properties in your neighborhood and um, we're interested in your home. Um, what can we do to help you? Okay. And by the way, if you're not ready to sell your house right now, it has a call to action in the bottom of the letter that says, please hold on to this letter. We understand this is a difficult time for you. Please hold on to this letter and call me when you're ready. And that's the last part of, of the message. But these probates, at least my probates, and David does it a little differently, I actually send them out in a, um, what would you call that, um, like an invitation style envelope. Like yeah, if you're yeah. getting an, an off, invitation yeah, an to a wedding. One, right? Yeah. And it looks like you're almost getting an invitation to a wedding. It's a light blue envelope. It's got that just hand handwritten letter in there. It's photocopied and we plug in their information and stuff like that. Um, and then it's got handwritten on the front, uh, my return address on the back, and a very personal kind of cutesy little stamp on it for the mailing. That's you know? definitely not, getting not opened. like a yeah. flag where it's just bland and blah. It's like a Garfield or a... So it's personal because the goal in marketing is is number one, you got to get people to open the letter and not just throw it in the trash with all the other spam that's coming in on a daily basis, right? And then yeah, once get they, it open and then keep get it. Get it open. That's step number one, which in that scenario, they look like they're getting a wedding invite. They're opening it. Uh, and then number two, um, they've got to respond to what's in that letter. 
So anyway, so that that's how this one came about. Um, we had sent them some probate marketing, and they reached out to me, and it was um, a sister and brother, and their mother had passed away, and this house had not been updated for, um, God, probably 50 years. And so when you get inside, it's still got the green shade carpeting. Maybe that was the 70s. Yeah. The green shade That's pretty carpeting. Bad, yeah. and the, it had carpet on the wall, so oh, that tells that's you bad. how old the property was. Yeah, that's definitely 70s, 80s for sure. But the other thing this property had going against it is the city was up their rear end. And in a city like Trenton, Michigan, um, they are not anybody's friend. They are very anal, is the word to use. Um, and they don't cut anybody slack. And so the city... Um, had given them about $30,000 in repairs that they would have to do to if they wanted to sell this house. And so this house was worth about um, $180,000 um, retail value. Um, they, of course, were not in a position to put 30000 into this house, 40, 50, whatever it was going to be on their end. I, I tell you, I'll tell you in a minute what we put into it, but they're thinking they're going to have to put 50000 into this house, right? Um, they weren't in a position to do that. And so they knew they couldn't sell it on the market because of that. And so they um, were happy to receive a letter from a real estate investor where we're talking about buying their property as is. And so obviously came out to the house, did our evaluation. Um, my numbers, my renovation costs were actually 34000 on the house um, when I went through. But it was a full update. You know, kitchens, baths. This was actually a tri-level too. Oh wow! Don't house. you? You normally don't do tri levels. Normally don't. No. Um, so that was rare for me. Just just because they take longer to sell in our market, tri levels, quad levels are not popular for some reason. They're just like oddballs where people don't buy them. They take a lot longer. Yeah. Do you well, experience I, that? I you know I don't I <laughs> I wholesale, so they all tend to go fast. Yeah. So, you know, if you get them cheap enough, I do notice that yeah. they're more popular out west than they are here. Right. So um, so I met them at the house and. Um, you know, I was asking, you know, I use this example a lot. What are you guys looking to do? What's most important to you? Are you looking to get the most money in your pocket or are you looking for a, a pain for your transaction? Because if you're looking to get the most money in your pocket, we're probably not the solution for you. You should list the house and sell it. That wasn't the case because the city is breathing on their neck. Something's got to be done. These repairs got to be made to the house. That's like a lot of extra motivation. A lot of motivation. The city was doing the work for me. So thank you, city of Trenton, in that regard. <laughs> but not thank you for when we resold the house. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so anyway, so, you know, of course, what was most important in this scenario was um, to have a quick sale because they weren't going to provide a certificate of occupancy. They weren't going to do the repairs. And there's very limited buyers that they were aware of that we're going to take a property in this condition. And so for us, the math is simple. We um, we make them an offer based on a maximum allowable offer formula. And that means that this house we're going to sell for, you know, $180,000. Um, uh, I need to pick it up for 70 to $0.80 cents on the dollar, less repairs. So uh, we make them an offer, and I this was probably about a month ago. I remember what we picked it up for, but we actually ended up getting this house for ninety two thousand, and we had to put forty thirty four thousand into it. That's a good deal, man. Yeah, but there wasn't much negotiation that needed to be done um, because they understood the process at this point. They knew that this house needed a lot of work. Yeah, you do a lot of education up front. Like, here's your best option if you want the most money, and then here's how we work. Exactly. And then they just know exactly what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. a lot of this is setting your expectations up front. Yeah. So, so when I'm walking through the house, I'm telling them, you know, the math is simple. I'm disclosing this to them and saying, at the end of the day, I'm going to follow up with you in 24 to 48 hours and make you an offer based on this and based on what we have to put in the house and what we think we can sell for. We have to have a minimum return on our investment. And I'm going to come out of the gate with my best foot forward. So there's no negotiation. And so I'm setting them up for, you know, a non-negotiation scenario where, look, I want to put the absolute most I physically can in your pocket. For us and our firm, it's just a numbers game. And so I'm going to take you up to that high number, that that Mayo formula, and that's the best offer. I put my best foot forward with our offer. And so I set that up when I call them and I make them the offer. Um, and so I made them the offer and they accepted it. 
And uh, that was it. We closed on it. Um, I think that one we closed on about three weeks after the fact. They still had some stuff to do with the title and everything else being a probate. But uh, And then we took it through the renovation process, which this house took us about 45 days. It was quite extensive. Um, and with the city there... They, yeah, making it a little extra they were time. <laughs> making it extra uh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for us. To, it was easy. Everybody would right. do it, right? But we ended up selling this house actually for about 14000 over what we expected. 194000 Nice. Yeah. Doesn't happen all the time, but nice when it does, yeah, right? We had multiple offers on it, um, and it sold uh, in a day. At 194. So you guys can do the math at home and figure out what that profit may have looked like. That's a lot of money. That's like 55. That's probably, you probably cleared like 45, 50, right? About All within that done. range. I think yeah. about 42, somewhere around there. Start to remember. finish. Yeah. How, how many days start to finish or months start to finish? So this took me, um, this took me a couple. So we'll include a few days for negotiation and then about 45 days. I said to renovate. Uh, we sold it very, very fast, and then the new buyer was FHA, and they took – we ran into some issues with them. Typically, an FHA buyer um, takes 45 to 60 days. Right now, we're experiencing a close. This one took close to 70 days. Mm. Um, yeah, that's the problem with FHA sometimes. Yeah, so, uh, so it took us a little longer on the back end, but – Still a good return when you look at it. So I don't know. Do the math, Jeremy. What does that add up to? How many days? Uh, like I think you're a little over three months, right? Yeah, f- call it four months. Call maybe. it four months. Yeah, probably. that's not bad. Yep, yep. And uh, not not too bad. And as that is a downside with FHA, but you well, got eighteen grand more too. So yeah, you were compensated well for your time, yeah. as annoying as it was. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. so that's a real deal in our marketplace, and that lead came from a probate fix and flip. We kept it in house for ourselves. Um, our our cycles we try to shoot for our maximum 120 day cycles. So that's from purchase to renovation to resale, capital back in the bank account. Yeah, you guys also do apartments too, and all, do. you do all sorts of things. So you don't yeah. just do single family homes, right? Yeah. So about three years ago, we moved into the same thing, um, trying to flip apartment buildings. And we've got a few under our belt now, and we're actually looking for another one. We're trying to double our quota. We're trying to go from two apartments a year to four. So if anybody out there listening has a good deal in Michigan on an apartment, email it to him. Flip, Dylan, send it our way. Dylan at the Borland Group LLC right. dot com yeah. and just put dollar signs in the subject. <laughs> <That's right. Yeah. laughs> so he knows as soon as he sees it. Yeah, we uh, look for value add opportunities. So it's gotta be if we're fixing flipping a house or fixing and flipping an apartment building. So I get a lot of people and they say, Dylan, what do you look for in apartment buildings? No turnkey stuff. We're not looking for turnkey operations. We're looking for things that the building has to be improved, the management has to be improved, it's dilapidated, but it's in a good area. And so we come in, we fix it up, renovate it, improve the management, resell it two, three years down the road. Boom. Don't you... um, if. Don't you have like a capital to the Borland Group Capital too, something we like that? Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this year we launched Borland Capital Partners, which is a large real estate hedge fund geared towards investing in single family apartment buildings, some commercial, um, and that was created as a result of people asking me to invest, and I didn't have a solution for them, and so we opened a large hedge fund. So if you're looking for passive returns on your capital, that'd probably be a good fit for for that scenario, but it's accredited investors only accredited investors only. According Sorry folks. SEC. And bye-bye government. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Accredited <laughs> investors only in the fund, but what's that website? Is it Borland capital? Borland capital.com. Yep. And I'll put yep. all this in yep. the show notes folks. Yep. So if you enjoy this too, by the way, um, Dylan's taking time out of his busy day here on a Saturday, he could be putting things under contract. He could be flipping. We need you to do some things, right? So we need you to like it. And then we need you to share this podcast. Go to the Facebook, the facebook.com forward slash the Borland group. Share it from there. Um, go to uh, facebook.com forward slash the David Tupin. Share it from there or from the Renegade Detroit Investor page. Share it from there so we can see you sharing it. All right. And a good, you know, what just came to mind while we're talking about it is people listening to this are probably going to have a lot of questions, more detailed. How did you do this? How did you do that? Yeah. A good format for that would be our new bi weekly video by monthly right by by weekly oh by weekly every two weeks okay on wednesday is that bi-weekly 
I don't know. <laughs> Twice a month. At this point. Twice, Twice a, a month, month, folks. Yeah. Uh, we're doing a, a, a series called The Real Deal with David and Dylan, where we want to answer your questions live, on the air, unscripted, raw. It's a video podcast. Um, so if you guys have questions, um, that would be a good format for it as well. Yeah, email them um, David at the Boiling Group yeah. LLC or Dylan at the Boiling Group Correct. LLC if you want those questions answered. And I will put the YouTube channel in the show notes, yeah. folks. Yeah, check it out and maybe send him a message too and thank him for his time and all that. This this stuff does take a lot of time and effort to put together. So, do you have anything else, Dylan? That's it for me. We got another deal next week. We'll talk about. Awesome. All right, folks. So go to the Boiling Group LLC dot com. Hit them up on Facebook dot com forward slash the Boiling Group. LL, or yeah, the Borland Group, Facebook.com forward slash the David Tupin. And I think if you just search Borland. I, I love that hashtag, the David Tupin. The I make David fun of him about that all the time. Yeah. The David Tupin. Or look up Dylan S. <laughs> Borland. That's correct. And you can add him. That's his uh, public page, yeah. too. So yep. Or BorlandCapital.com if you're interested. You're a credit investor. Yes. If not, go away. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, but we have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so, and check it out, and um, thanks for tuning in this week. I really appreciate your attention, and I know a bunch of you are sharing and liking, too, so thank you, and a bunch of you came up uh, to me. Oh, you also have a meetup, first Saturday of every month. I almost forgot. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. First Saturday of every month, uh, between yep. 10 to 12. Make sure you RSVP. It's limited to 50 people. It's an intimate coaching group session. Yep. So if you don't RSVP and you don't show up on time, we do do a live Facebook feed though. So if you right. can't make it, it's there. So go to meetup.com and look up the Borland group or go to facebook.com and there'll be an event there on the Borland group. All right, folks. See everybody next week. Take care.